Hello, St. Peter's Church family. I'm really sorry that I can't see your faces, um, but this is amazing that we can uh, try to worship together in this way um, from our own homes. And I know it's not the same, uh, but I do pray that uh, we would find new and fresh ways to connect with one another and with the Lord Jesus in prayer and worship. And so, grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us pray. Lord, at such a difficult and challenging time, we pray that you would direct our thoughts, that you would teach us to pray, that you would lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Loving Lord, fill us with your life-giving, joy-giving, peace-giving presence, that we may praise you now with our lips and all the day long with our lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us hear some words from Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. The psalmist reminds us that there is forgiveness to be found in the Lord Almighty. So let us now take a moment to pause, and you might even want to hit the pause button, and to take a few minutes to reflect on the past few days. Maybe there have been times when we have failed to live as God's children, where we have marred his image in us. Times when we've rejected his ways and maybe acted selfishly or in ways that are irritable or rash. Let's take a moment to reflect before we seek and receive God's healing and forgiveness. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus who died for us, forgive us all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, Set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. In a moment, I'm going to read from God's word, uh, Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter 3. Um, just a bit of background first. So 
Um, it's believed that this second letter was written to Timothy whilst Paul was in prison in Rome. Now, he'd been under house arrest before, but this was a whole different experience uh, for Paul as he's now languishing in a jail, um, chained in some kind of dungeon. Um, the conditions wouldn't have been very good. There wouldn't have been uh, much comfort or friendship. Paul would have felt very lonely and isolated indeed. And he faced the possibility of a death sentence as well. And so this letter is a little bit like a last will and testament as well, as he writes to uh, dear Timothy that he um, wrote in such friendly and warm terms with, in fact, almost like the son that Paul never had. And Paul is writing to encourage Timothy to help build him up and to spur him on. And Paul's also concerned for the churches, especially in the face of persecution by the Emperor Nero. So let's hear from Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter 3, the first five verses. You must understand this, that in the last days, distressing times will come. For people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, inhuman, implacable, slanderers, profligates, brutes, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, holding to the outward form of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid them. The Apostle Paul believed, along with most of the church at that time, that they were living in the end times, that is, waiting for the return of Jesus Christ to the earth. And Peter, in Acts chapter 2, believed that the last days had begun immediately after Pentecost. And then in Hebrews chapter 1, the writer says this, Long ago God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets, but in these last days he has spoken to us by a son. That is, of course, Jesus Christ. We are surely ourselves living in these last days or the end times and so more than 2,000 years on I wonder can we see any similarities in the world that we live in today compared with the times that Paul was writing in. Paul describes distressing or stressful times that they were living in as people were looking after number one loving themselves more than loving God, living disobedient, rebellious lives, being ungrateful, unforgiving, slanderous and selfish. And unfortunately, we see those kinds of behaviours today. I'm not just talking in the world at large, but even within the church, sadly. And today we face stressful and distressing times across the world um, with the coronavirus pandemic and other issues too that we have faced like climate change and terrorist attacks, wars, unrest, famine and other disease. And at times such as these we find ourselves asking some very searching questions about God about ourselves, the impact of our actions and behaviours. And of course, it's not all doom and gloom because there are many people who are seeking to make a difference in the world and many of them in the name of Jesus Christ. The New Testament church eagerly awaited Christ's return, believing it could happen at any moment. And Jesus himself spoke of his return, urging his followers to be ready, to be watchful. And rather than being caught up in the how of Christ's return, I would suggest that we need to be ready 
uh, to follow God's teaching in the scriptures. And he urges us to be ready, to be sober, alert and vigilant. And uh, let us keep short accounts with God and with one another. And as for the sorts of behaviour that Paul writes about, boasting, loving money, being arrogant, abusive, unholy, not being forgiving. Let us each search our hearts and be ready to confess to God those attitudes and behaviours in our own lives that are not as they should be, the ways that we're living, not as the Lord Jesus would have us live in the light of his return. But rather than wallowing in self-pity, beating ourselves up, Let's be quick to turn to the Lord to seek his forgiveness and a fresh start and to ask him to long for his Holy Spirit to come and equip us and help us to live as his children of light, especially in such challenging times like the ones that we find ourselves in today. Let's be ready to avoid those kinds of behaviours as we witness them around us. Let's be ready to challenge and to call them out. It's not for us to judge. We can leave that to God. But let us uh, be ready to avoid those sorts of tempting behaviours. And especially when we see them within the church, um, let's be those who will call those behaviours out and ask the Lord to help us to live differently, to lead by example. The Apostle Paul would have felt so helpless and restricted and out of his comfort zone as he lay in his prison cell. Perhaps we feel some loneliness or isolation at this time, especially when we're being encouraged for our own safety and the safety of others to be um, socially distant from one another. Perhaps because of the new ways that we're having to behave, we might feel out of our comfort zones. I certainly do. Uh, doing this video, for example, this is me out of my comfort zone well and truly. Despite being in such a challenging situation, the Apostle Paul was committed to praying faithfully and constantly for his brother, Timothy. Rather than feeling sorry for himself, he continually prayed for Timothy and sought to encourage him, even though they were at a distance from one another. So may we be encouraged and challenged to spur one another on, even at a social distance. There are lots of ways that we can keep in contact with one another. That we can spur one another on to good deeds. That we can help lift one another up when we're feeling low or burdened or isolated. But above all, may this be a time, indeed in these end times, let us take every opportunity to draw close to God, to keep short accounts with him and with one another, to spur one another on, to be encouraged, to ask the Lord to equip us, to live courageously, bravely, and with hope in our hearts, Hope that burns brightly that others may see the glory of our Lord Jesus and be drawn into a relationship with him, the living God. It can be very tempting right now to use this time of social isolation, to be complacent, to think only of ourselves, perhaps to spend less time in prayer and worship. But let's ask the Lord Jesus to help us to face those temptations, to overcome them indeed, to draw close to him, to one another in prayer and worship and in service. Let us lift one another continually to the Lord in prayer and let us be vigilant and ready to reach out in safe ways to those who are in need around us. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God's grace, peace, mercy, and peace be with us all. Amen. Okay, it's time for us to pray now, and I encourage any children that might be in the house to um, 
engage particularly with this activity we're going to pray using our hands so this will hopefully be a way that you can practice um, on other days of the week as well so let's begin by placing a hand out in front of us and we're going to begin by praying first using our thumb and we're thinking first of all of those closest to us those in our family friendships and support networks so let's think of those people lifting them to the lord you might want to name them out loud pray for those family members that at the moment we can't be face to face with those who are self-isolating those that we miss and want to thank God for. And now let's use the finger that we point with and let's think about those that point us in the right direction. So they might be our teachers, our doctors, and those in leadership within the church. Let's ask God for his strength and for wisdom and courage for all those who are trying to lead us through these uncertain times. Let us remember those teachers who are struggling at the moment to work from home. Maybe some of them are still having to go into work and they're having to juggle other demands like family time, those doctors under extra strain, and for church leaders as they discover new ways of being church right now and leading God's people through these uncertain times. And let us now take our middle finger, the tallest finger. We pray now for those in government. Let us pray for those local and national leaders, asking God to give wisdom as they make decisions and seek to protect people. Let us ask God to provide them with excellent advisors to guide them, to instruct them. And let's ask God to give them the ability to communicate clearly to the public. And now let's take our ring finger, the weakest finger, and let's think about those who are feeling physically, spiritually, mentally weak right now, those who are in trouble in some kind of pain or distress. Let's lift them to the Lord Jesus now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, our little finger. Let's pray for ourselves, for our own needs at this time. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Psalm 46 says this. God is our refuge and strength 
and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Amen. And so may the Lord Almighty, who loves you, protect you. May Jesus Christ, his Son, who died for you, save you. And may the Holy Spirit, who broods over the chaos and fills you with his presence, may he intercede for you and in you for others at this time. Amen. God bless you all.